Ravi, you're up first. You want to talk about Air Canada. Let's talk. Yes, yes. Lies, shenanigans. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted to start tonight's conversation uh, with a, just a delicate, about the delicate balance between ethics and profits within a capitalist society. So as the evacuation efforts were underway in the Northwest, Northwest Territories and Yellowknife due to the wildfires, some service provider algorithms behaved in accordance with the surge in demand. So when faced with the urgent need to evacuate, residents found that both companies significantly raised their ticket prices, sparking a debate about the moral implications of such surge prices. So for example, Air Canada's price went from approximately $300 for the flight to just over $4,600, while WestJet charged a customer $420 to change, a $420 change fee to postpone an existing flight, which they later refunded. So my question to you is, in a capitalist society that's focused mainly on profit, how can companies juggle making money with the moral duty to help communities in need during disasters. Johnny, why don't you start us off? Yeah, I mean, I understand as like in any business, you the bottom line is you do have to make money in an airline. And if there's a demand, that means there does has there you do have to implement higher prices in some respect. I think though, in the wider if, if I was this airline, in the wider perspective, I would have just been like whether I would have just seen it as a cash grab opportunity, money hungry opportunity, or if I would have seen it as like a hero airline opportunity that would have paid in the end where people would have respected your company and you would just got business through that. So I would have done it that way, but I understand. I think that that ticket for a price, that price for that ticket is insane and disrespectful. I would never. And especially when people are literally in an emergency, I think it's just disrespectful. But I, like I said, I would have wider perspective and just been like, let us be the hero airline that gets all the good business because we did the right thing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'll just say, I mean, I think, I think it's a little overblown though, because we, you, you, brought, you brought up that $4,665 flight ticket. It was what it was, was it's a misunderstanding because that ticket involved trips with three stops operated by different carriers. So it was not like, you know, Air Canada was out there trying to just go after it and just raised all their prices. This was just an odd ticket in an odd situation. I mean, mm -hmm. so I mean, I, it, a little overblown on that. So I don't know that their prices were jacked up the way they're trying to say. And, and then okay, they weren't that inflated. I mean, they were higher significantly. They were, they were higher. They were a bit higher. And, and, it, and it's good that they put the cap in. But, you know, I think the bigger problem is that, sure, they got a cap, right? But there's, like, no flights going out. <laughs> they, they, like, have, they, like, they, like, have no yeah. flights. So, I mean, they, I mean granted, yeah. they, they're trying to follow, you know, the Canada's guidance and stuff like that. But there's... There's no flights going out. So even if you were to get one of these flights or anything, there's just nothing there. And I get the whole idea about corporate profits and things like that. I just don't think, I don't think that's the case here personally. I mean, you had to convince me, Rob. Okay. No, I, and that's it. I mean, it's the algorithm of doing what the algorithm does. It's, hey, there's a surge in demand for these tickets. So now that automatically increases the value. Both companies did correct it. They issued apologies and statements saying that this was a misunderstanding. Um, I'm of the ilk of Johnny when it comes to this. I think that the airlines had, these airlines had an opportunity to really cash in. Free advertising, doing humanitarian relief, true. offering free flights, That's fair. and then using it as a tax write-off because you're doing humanitarian aid. To me, that's the ideal win scenario, as a, but the responsibility yeah. is to the shareholders. So it is all about capitalism and making money whenever you can make money. And when you can make money good, you make money good. But this is definitely not the time to do it. And in response, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau flew out, they've got the army involved and started getting some relief that way. But yeah, when people need to get out because everything is on fire, get the people and that's the point. out quickly get them out quickly and if you only offer one flight a day change your policy 
get the people out safely. So it, um, outside of that, that crazy, outside of that crazy ticket price that they're talking about, which again, that's that's one of those things where it's, yeah, you could point to it, but it's odd. Exaggerated. Outside of that, yeah. I mean, what were the ticket prices going for? How much more were they than before? Um, marginally, just marginally, like a if a, like a three hundred dollar flight might have been four hundred, so it was just a small increase, but it's still an increase nonetheless because of the surge in demand. It's just the what the algorithm is doing, and I think it's just very gauche. It just it when people I just don't like seeing profiteering, even at the onset of COVID, when certain items were in very high demand and people were making like like hoarding mountains of toilet paper and selling it to people as well. Bad news for you, chum. Uh, There's a world of leaves out they're there. They're still doing stuff like <laughs> that. I, I was hoarding. Like I that. hoarded a bunch of toilet paper too. I mean, I had I had toilet paper. Neo. I, had, I mean, yeah, but, what was I supposed but you to weren't. Do? Tur- I didn't, they were. But you weren't selling it for ten dollars a roll. No, I wasn't selling. No, I wasn't there you selling. go. So pro- <laughs> was, when <laughs> profiteering during a time of crisis <laughs> is just gross. It really is one of the grossest characteristics of humanity because. We seem to do it whenever there is a crisis. There is someone who's going to be greedy and try to make a really fast buck off of everybody during those times. Well, I think I think that is relative to the situation, though, a little bit, because I feel like sometimes, like, for example, this is not a good example, but it's one that came to my head. <laughs> um, there's this guy going along that goes to Beyonce concerts because he knows that after the Beyonce concerts, there's women that are, like, tired. They're in heels all night. They've been dancing. So he sells slippers genius like that's like that actually is it's genius. not <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you're tired you're but is that really profiteering that's just that's just that's that's just good demand. marketing that's yeah, that's, that's being a good that's he knows <laughs> he knows okay i guess okay i guess that's true i mean because nobody else was doing it. it'd be different if there were like you know competition and he was raising his prices just to be like because no. nobody else could get them you know, you know or it's or, it's different. Like no, if there was if, if there was a fire business. in the stadium and people were running out and he's then they're falling all over themselves and now he's trying to sell these slippers at fifty dollars a pop. You can okay. have one slipper for 50. you can have the right one for fifty. Yeah. You can have the left one for another fifty. Just that's you know, when it gets whenever shady. there's yeah. a crisis situation, whenever there's a disaster and people are trying to make a a lot when they're gouging you, when they're taking advantage of people in need, that's yeah. when it really is gross and disgusting. And if the software does it automatically, yeah, I, there needs to be checks and balances. And this is this is a humanitarian thing. So do the free flights, try to get the tax right off, offer more flights, just do the right thing. So Mike Winter says profiteering during natural disasters is disgusting, but they do it all the time. He said Alf tried to maximize profits of the. De- of the damn vaccines during COVID, Alf being Trump, obviously. Yeah. So- I do have one more comment though, and because one thing that makes me even more grossed up by the situation is that airlines, when they mismanage their business models, come to the taxpayers for bailouts. We see airlines do it repeatedly. So if we're there for, for- you in your time of need, because we can't really afford to have these places shut down when we are in our time of need. Remember that we bailed you out several times. You owe us. So do the right thing. Yeah. But this, Agreed. I will say, you talking about the profiteering. I mean, this Air Canada surging thing had gotten me thinking about like the other battle that Canada has going on because you, <laughs> you were on Facebook and we were sharing articles back and forth and for some reason you couldn't That's see them. Crazy. We were trying to figure those out. And then we found out that Meta has a ban on news articles because apparently, you know, so Canada has this new law called C-18 and, mm-hmm. you know, and it wants tech giants like Meta to pay Canadian news publishers every time one of us sends a link to one of our friends. So like the link, that I sent to Rob and he couldn't see it. They want to make sure that those news people get paid for it. So what Meta decided to do is do a complete news ban in Canada, cutting off vital information, which is crazy during these like raging wildfires. So I will I say prime ministers, the prime minister called for reversal of the ban now. So I'm curious, do y'all, 
do y'all think Canada is right trying to get these local news companies paid or is Meta wrong, you know, and just focused on profits? Meta is a corporate entity focused on products. And this isn't the first time that Facebook's ta- Facebook takes on this fight. They, the uh, Australian government did something similar back in 2021. And they, did. they got them to pay out. They, they, they did it. So th- yeah, I think that the real yeah. issue here is that if it pans out in Canada, the U.S. will follow. And I mean, that's a huge part of their revenue They got it done in Australia, though. But, Rob, but it, there was a real struggle because they did have news blackouts mm-hmm. because they had trouble negotiating. Meta had trouble negotiating with all of those Australian news organizations trying to get their deals. Some people wanted this type of money, this type of money, just so that people could right. get their news through, well, their news links social through media. Yeah. Social through Facebook. Facebook, so it was a challenge. Even though, you know, it was a good idea for the news outlets, it was a challenge. So I, yeah, I mean, but it's it's the something new. The oligarchs got enough money. So, what were you saying, Jen? I think I, I was going to say, even though it's a challenging challenge, it's because it's something new that we're trying to do here. Like we're trying to pay the news outlets. For I'm sorry, I was looking at the comment some, online. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> We're trying to pay the news outlet. So I think that it's a good thing. I think Meta is jerks and they should pay. And I think that it's messed up, especially in this situation where you need vital information. So um, I hope that they're successful, though, because I need to be able to see Rob's links. Like, this is sick. <laughs> I'm tired of this. <laughs> see, I'm going I'm to I'm disagree with you guys just a little bit because. Why? Uh, I mean, think about it. I mean, it's what he does. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's a fact. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> I'm going to put this on Canada because I don't know that this is the right thing to do necessarily. Because you know, if you if you look at Facebook, Facebook, you're not getting your news through Facebook. It's just a conduit. Matter of fact, Facebook has provided a lot of opportunity for small news organizations that weren't making any money to get a lot of uh, Recognition, views, yeah. a lot of views, because sure. now they're sharing back and forth. They're sharing this, they're sharing that. I mean, before social media, a small news organization had to do a lot of advertising. They had to do all of this. But now with all these algorithms and all these shares and all these other things, a small organization can get an incredible story and blow up in a heartbeat. And that wasn't possible before. So. I mean, they're pushing a lot of views their way, which leads to a lot of profits, especially if they do it correctly. So but I don't know. Right? I, I disagree because I think views don't mean profits. We've seen that with Instagram influencers. That's how they like make they money. Million... No, no that's how Facebook is getting smart. all of the ad revenue. Facebook's getting all the ad yeah, revenue. Yeah, they know by, what they're doing. By, by being shared they're that genius. way. And they have profited. They have made so much money from us. Billion. So, Billions Honestly, a year. Good, honest, <laughs> honest news, honest and unbiased news that isn't produced for free. Good news agencies need money to pay reporters to get the real goods out there. So we report yeah. on the real goods that are out there. We that's what we talk about. I'm not out in the trenches because that takes capital, a lot of it. And Facebook is just, re- Meta is just redirecting and getting all of their advertisement payouts. But we re- that news should be, yeah, they, they need to be paying. But they're not displaying the news, the news on their page. They're not displaying the news and information on Facebook. So some, to so read the, the article, is- you have to go to the news to the organization. Website. You have to right. go to CNN. You have to go to... Uh, CBC. In you have to go age to age of instant information, Neo. How many people click the news article? They look at the picture, they read the headline, they read the little descriptor line, exactly. and they move on to the next thing. They move on to but the next thing. But they got that instant bit of information. They, they got that little bit of information. Now they've moved on to the next story. But it's true. Again, I feel like there are just a lot of news organizations that wouldn't exist today. Like there's this now, uh, th- now this oh, yeah. organization that mm-hmm. wouldn't exist, yeah. a very small organization that wouldn't exist without social media. There's a lot of news organizations that just wouldn't have happened if Facebook weren't sending people 
to them. So I don't know. There's a balance, I think, there. And I don't know that. I, I think it's a, symbiotic, it's a symbiotic situation that we are now making more of a, um, I don't know, more of a lecherous situation where now somebody has to get something. I think both people were winning. Both organi- the news organizations were winning. Smaller ones, maybe not. Who knows? But, but, but when you're going to the lose tech one way or the other. Winning, have the tech giants been winning at a much higher rate than the rest of the industries, Neo? When individuals' net worth is worth more than media empires. But that's so because the profits are spread among I mean, multiple this... news organizations, whereas there's one tech giant. So, of course, yeah, you, some of them are going to do extremely well. CNN's doing exceptionally well. There's other news organizations doing well. What's that? Um, the Trump one, um, uh, the Truth. conservative, not, not True Social, I'm talking about the conservative one that blew up. There's a bunch of conservative or, you know, uh, news organizations that blew up. There's a bunch of liberal organizations that blew up. I'm just saying it was a very good symbiotic relationship. And I think a few small news organizations are the ones fighting this no, battle. And I'm, I'm going to disagree with you because getting left out. Rupert Murdoch's, Rupert Murdoch's <laughs> net worth is sits somewhere around $10 billion, that while Zuckerberg's Newsmax. is Thank you. sitting Thank at you, about $100 billion. And in a much shorter period of time. So I'm sorry, Rupert owned a media conglomerate and he's nowhere near what Zuckerberg has accomplished. I, the wealth is not being distributed in an equitable fashion. It's not being distributed in a fair way. And I think the media outlets absolutely should be getting their cut so that we can continue getting honest and unbiased news. I think the reason they don't want to cut the checks for these reporters is because if you do it for them, then you're going to have to do it for other professionals that distribute like important services on that. Like, I don't I can't think of anybody right now. It does anything. set a precedence. But, There's no question. Yeah. It's going to make everybody. The precedent was set in Australia. The precedent, it has been set. But they pay influencers on these platforms. So. I think they need to find a different way. And I don't think it needs to be legislated. I think they need to find a different way to do it. I mean, the prime minister, you, his plea for, for Meta to reverse this ban is clear that it's needed. You need to have this type of communication with you know, Facebook, yeah. being able to, your friends being able to say, hey, by the way, you know, there's a wildfire nearby, get out of here. Facebook has a yeah. value to it, and so do the news organizations. So mm-hmm. they're going to have to find some balance, is my thought. All right. Everybody uh, we, knows Facebook, but nobody really knows BBC News. They're not going to go to these specific <laughs> Washington Post. Like, they're not going to go. Not and the that's newer, a problem. the younger generation. That's, they're not going to Exactly. Do and that's a problem. I shouldn't be, they shouldn't be going to TikTok and Facebook to get their news. Like Winter says, Gianni, please go watch My Own Private Idaho immediately after this show is over. And he also says. My own private Idaho. Got you. He also says, Neo disagrees and is wrong often. <laughs> it's true. Hey, hey. Welcome hey, back, Mike. Hey, <laughs> did you just say it's true? I don't appreciate that. Is this true? No, I, Neo does have good points. <laughs> Those shenanigans. You have good points, Neo. Um, this is uh, shenanigans. I don't think they should be changing there. I don't think they should be. This is truth. I don't think they should be changing. I think it's been working just fine, and legislating this is nonsense. Legislating all I know is all the good people that are doing good things aren't getting paid enough, so pay them. I mean, but that's everybody. Everybody's not getting paid enough. I'm not getting paid <laughs> enough. True. I'm doing good things, Come too, on. I'm not getting paid Zuck enough. Is getting, <laughs> Zuck is getting paid enough. <laughs> Musk is getting paid enough. The tech giants are getting paid more than enough. They're, they're flying. They're, fl- they're going to Mars. They do provide a Come lot on. of value, though. They do provide a lot of value, but so do other people like uh, teachers. And- 